Hey everybody, welcome back to the Guilds of London. Let's continue. We were about to resolve some guilds. So remember, like I said, we start from top left, we go along, and hey, there's four people here, including the beetle. So we're going to activate this. Now, the process for uh, activating a guild, is there a little summary for it here? Uh, actually, no, there's not. It, that's kind of odd that they did not put a summary for it in the overview, but there's a nice summary for it right about here. It's three stages. First, there is negotiation, then there is voting, and then finally there is rewards. Now the negotiation is the first step, and what that means is, that's where these neutral liverymen come in. In player order, and as it stands right now, player order has changed. Jen is the first player. In player order, uh, players have the opportunity to deploy neutral liverymen to a tile that's being resolved. Now, as it stands, Jen doesn't have any. But let's say Jen did have a couple, just for the sake of argument. If Jen had a couple, she would be the first. And you know, so I've got two, Jen's got two, let's just say. Jen could spend one or both of these to remove or replace one or two of the people here. So what Jen could do is she could say, you know what, I'm going to spend both of these guys and kick my guys out. They would go back to the guild hall and replace them with these neutrals. And then all of a sudden, the, the, they're still more than three people here, um, but Jen has the clear majority now, so she would take it. But if Jen were to have made that move, then I would say, oh, well, you kick me out, I'm gonna use one of my guys and kick you out as well, and then boom, now everybody's been kicked out. And what that means is, now there are not enough players in here to resolve it anymore, so all of these guys would go back to the supply, and we would have to start building up again. There had been, you know, um, there, there, th this represented negotiation. There was some negotiation. I got stuff kicked out. Somebody else kicked other people out. And as it turned in, it turned out the guild did not get activated at all. Now, um, that would have been the case. Let's see. Where did everything go? I had two. Jen had one. All right. That's what it was, right? Oh, dear. No, here, oh, there's my two. All right. Put my two over here. Haha. -ha. So that's what it was. So that would be an interesting thing if Jen had to. Now, on, on the flip side, say, if I didn't have any and Jen had only one, Jen could spend her one to replace one of my guys, now we would have a tie. The thing still wants to activate, but there's no clear leader amongst the players, so that means it wouldn't activate, and um, we would have to go on, and it wouldn't activate to potentially the next round when there's a clear leader. Or again, if Jen had two and I didn't have any, she could kick me out completely. So these neutral liverymen are very, very powerful. And that's the thing. Because Jen could see that I had two and she didn't have any, if she had, right, is this where it was? If Jen had tried to make a big move, you know, say she had moved three guys in here so that she had a clear majority, she knew the first thing I would do is I would use my two liverymen to defend myself, to kick two of her guys out, to put my two guys in, or you know, to put the new neutral guys in, and then my majority would have been assured. So because I had these, Jen knew she could not take the majority from me. So that's why she only sent one in there for the purposes of, well, being able to basically just sending one guy in there, lets her grab a point and get something out of that. Now, honestly, Spending a whole action to get a point, I don't know if that was the best move. She might have been better off doing something else and letting the point go, but you know what the heck, uh, she just didn't want to miss out. So we're now resolving this. We both have the opportunity to negotiate. I I I'm the only person who has any neutral liverymen, so I'm not going to negotiate with them. I'm not going to bring, although no, actually, no, that's not, that's not entirely true. I can. I can negotiate to send one of my neutral liverymen out to kick Jen out. The thing is still going to resolve because there's enough people here. There's a clear majority, me, and I could use that to kick Jen out, and she gets no points. And what the heck, I think I will do that. So Jen wasted an action to get a guy in there, although she's making me waste a liveryman to kick her back out. Now, is that worth it? I probably, I don't know. I think I want to save these for if I really need them to send myself. So I don't mind. I won't kick Jen out. I'll let her have her one point rather than kicking her out and losing my guys who I could use to defend myself later if I need to. Or to make a very aggressive move in, you know, at, at some point in the game. All right. So negotiation is done. Now the voting happens, which means we count up the number of remaining players. And if there's a clear majority, the guild is activated. There is a clear majority. It's me. And so... I am the majority, I get three points, one, two, three, and Jen in second place gets one point. So Jen is still in first place. But I also get another action 
In addition to three points for first place and one point for second place, there is also the winner gets to pick any one guy he's got on the board and move him for free. Remember, normally to move guys, you have to spend a card, which is expensive. But right now, I get to move somebody for free. And I think I'll just go on ahead and move one of the, um, and it could be any of my guys. I'll just go on ahead and move this guy, though, over here. Because remember, I want to have control of a lot of reds. I want to have control of guilds that are next to each other. And as it happens, this is number three, this is number four. This is where the Beatles are going next anyway. So this is going to be the next hotly contested area. So I got a freebie move over here. And now that, um, and now the last thing that happens is, well, the Beatle is going to move to the next lowest place. Uh, this, Jen collected this chip, so she'll hold on to that because maybe it'll work be worth bonus points at the end of the game if she gets the right Guild of London card. And this flips to indicate it is now activated. And I get to put my guy on here to indicate I am the master and Jen's other guy. that She, she, she deployed this guy out here to get a point. She got a point, plus maybe some additional points, uh, depending on how that goes. And um, that's it. So this is resolved. And remember that this tile is worth two extra bonus points to me because I want to have masters on red guilds at the end of the game. So that was it. Now, we continue resolving. And it's interesting. I just moved this guy over here. If me moving over ha and the beetle moving over, and if there had already been, if I'd really been smart, if I had previously gotten two guys over here on some previous turn, and then at the, uh, this activated, hey, I move a guy over here and the beetle moves over here, boom! We would now activate this tile as well. You can get combo chains of tile activation. Now, I'm not, I wasn't that smart, so we didn't do that, so we're not activating. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, here's our next activation. Jen is here all by herself, so she gets two points. She's even further in the lead, and she gets to send one of her masters, which is somebody who's on a, an activated guild, or one of her regular guys, out to the colony. Jen's going to send it out to the colony, and now Jen has tied it up. We are in a neck and neck race for a majority out in the Ulster Plantation. And so, and Jen got two points for that. She got the free, um, which more we each have to spend a card to do that. The other guy becomes the guild master of the leather workers, and nobody took this two points. So that we activated that, we continue on, and that's it. So, that was the end of round two. We now move on to round three, where we are not going to activate anything at the end of the turn. We're going to activate again in round four. And in, in the end of round four, we can activate more guilds if we've got majorities, you know, if, if we've got enough people on them. Plus, we will also activate the plantation, because that happens on rounds four, eight, twelve, and sixteen. So, and now, because Jen has more points than me, she is now the first player. And it's a big disadvantage to be first in this game. You want to be last player. You want to be last in points because in an area control sense, that means you can see what everybody else does and respond to them. Being the first player means you don't have as much chance. That's how Jen, as the last player, was able to swoop over here and get this guild all by herself. So anyway, so Jen is the first. She's got four cards. Not a lot of cards. Now what can she do? So this card is free. It would let her move a guy. Um, well, she could use this card to move somebody onto a green space, or for free, she could use the special power and move him onto a blue space, plus get an extra card. So this really pushes Jen towards... And you know what? I mean, so there's this blue. There's this blue right next to it. And remember... Although, no, actually, remember, Jen does not want to control multiple adjacent tiles at the end of the game. Because if she doesn't, normally she'd say, hey, let's go on ahead and do this so she can control both because that's bonus points to her. But that would actually be bad for her. So is there any other blue she would like to grab to move one of her guys out to blue and also get a card? I say, well, actually, this is interesting. The, the, the pensioners and uh, stoker mongers, whatever th this particular guild is, you can move here with a red or a blue. So I think Jen is going to play this card uh, to move one of her guys out here. And so now the race is on. One more person gets out here, there will be four, and we're going to activate that guild. And I want that guild because it counts as a red guild, and I need red guilds. Jen wants that guild. Although it's interesting, coming in second is three points plus a, uh, what do you call it, uh, neutral. But coming in first place lets you move one person somewhere on the board and move one person out to the plantation. And so that means whoever wins this is going to get another one out to the plantation. That could break the tie for the plantation in the fourth round. So this is a really important spot. So that's why Jen's getting in there. 
Now, what else does she want to do? Well, unfortunately, well, and if she wanted, heck, she could just go on ahead and discard both of these and get two more blues on there, and then she's got a clear majority. Or she could wait. Or she could use these cards and pay money to activate them to get more guys out to the plantation so that she... Now, the plantation is whoever comes in first gets to draw three and keep one extra bonus card. Whoever comes in second gets three points. If we were playing with the other plantation, whoever comes in first gets seven points. Whoever comes in second gets three points. So, but, you know, getting more bonus cards is a big, big deal. Hmm. So... Let's see here. Now, other thing, Jen could pay one buck by you know, discarding another card, and uh, that would let her move. Um, how many? Which one is this? Right. This is interesting. I hadn't noticed this before. This is a uh, person plus. Is this a different person you get to move? I don't think so. We act, the game actually comes with a really nice player that walks you through a lot of the functions of a lot of these cards, and sometimes the icons do leave you a little high and dry. Let's see here. Is there right, one or more? Right, yeah, so the guy plus other guys uh, shadowed behind means one or more. So this is saying for one dollar, Jen can move as many guys as she wants out to the plantation? Wow. This one is saying um, as, as many dollars as Jen wants to spend, she can move that many of anybody, mine or hers, back to the supply. Basically just kick them out of the new world. So Jen could play this and pay one coin to kick me out of the plantation altogether. So she has sole um, control of it, but she'd have to discard something else to do it. Or she could use this and discard a card or... You know, or let's see. Now this is an interesting one. This one, which it doesn't cost anything, says pick a suit, look at a suit, and then at the end of the turn, for every master you have of that suit, draw a card. Jen has one match, so if she picked blues. I mean, this would get she could play this for free to get one extra card. That's not that great. But if she had a whole bunch of blue um, guilds, then this would be a great card to play. But as it is, I think this is probably a better card to use to pay for something else. But you know what? I don't think. In fact, actually, I'm going to go one step further. I think Jen is not even going to play the one card she was thinking about playing. Jen is going to pass. Jen is not going to play anything this turn. If on a turn you'd play nothing, you draw four cards instead of two at the end of your turn. So now Jen's got eight cards in her hand, which is a bummer because your maximum hand size is seven. So now Jen's got to get rid of one, but this means Jen is going to go into the next round, round four, with seven cards in her hand, and that's going to give her enough control to, well, she hopes to 100% dominate this place and ensure that I don't get it. And if she's lucky, plays it well, also dominate that area. So she is just setting herself up for round four, but she has to get rid of one of these cards. Oh my gosh, which one? I think she'll get rid of this card because she can't really use this anyway. So, so now she's going into round four with seven cards. She's going to be very, very powerful by basically skipping an entire turn. But you know, like I said, this was a turn where not much was happening anyway. Okay, so now it's my turn. I could do the same thing, but I don't want to draw four cards because I have to discard two. So, but I probably, if I play one card, I'll draw two. Then I'll have six. I can see that Jen has set herself up to be very, very powerful in the next round. So I don't want to play all my cards right now and then be really weak in the next round. But what do I want to do? All right, so this is, this says basically, um, at the end, uh, you know, uh, this symbol means at the end of the round. At the end of the round, I draw two cards if I've got masters on different guilds. I draw three cards if I've got masters on the same guild. Now as it is, I've only got one master, so this doesn't do me any good until I've done another guild. So this is a good card right now in the early game to pay for other cards. Let's see. Uh, this one is pull guys out of the colony and bring them back home, and for every guy I pull back, score a point. So if I had, you know, if I had put a bunch of guys out here, but then I discovered that Jen got even more, and I realized I wasn't going to get majority, I could play this card to pull them back and score points at the same time. This one is just move anybody around, mine or Jen's, and let's see. Now you know what I think I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to I'm going to play. I'm going to play this blue just for movement to get another guy over here. Because it's really important for me to do that. I can play blue or red movement to get guys in there. I could do this right now, but I'm going to save this because I might need to use this to move Jen out of there. Because that's the thing. Remember, I'm in last place. 
So I will get final say. So if Jen moves a bunch of stuff in, I'm going to save this so I can pull somebody out. So I'm not going to play that. So I'm just playing one card. That's it. I'm just continuing to put my influence there. And then at the end of my turn, I draw two cards. All right, so that was it for round three. And now we're moving on to round four. Jen is the first player. And this is where she'll see if she's got enough power. Because, I mean, ugh. It's tricky because I've got these guys. I can, I mean, if Jen really takes a strong majority, I can always use these guys to kick her out because I am last in turn order. So, does she think she can do it? Or does she just try to piggyback off to make sure she scores three points and gets a guy and really just focuses on getting people out in the plantation? Or does she put a bunch of guys in here to force me to give these guys up, knowing full well that she won't, she won't win it, but she just wants me to flush these out so I don't have them for later? Because, I mean, yeah, Jen's got... I mean, heck, Jen could just spend four cards and get one, two, three, four guys. Boom! And, I mean, the best I could do is I could remove two of them. As well, because Jen, but Jen doesn't know what else I've got. Um, but that's, that's a big expensive thing to force me to flesh guys out. So, now she also has got these cards that will just let her get guys out to the new world. Um, also, the interesting thing is, if Jen knows that if I win this, then I will get to move somebody out here and I'll take majority. So I think, I think Jen is going to play this card to, and, and she can pay any amount of gold. She's going to have to pay one gold, which is, she, which is he's going to use. All right, she's not, I mean, this is, turns anything into a purple to be able to move into purple spaces. She's going to pay this as a dollar to fire that up to move one guy. And so Jen has kicked me out of the plantation. And this symbol means doesn't come back to the guild hall, gets out of the game and has to be rehired. All right, so... Jen now owns this plantation, but she knows that if I win this, I'm going to move one back over here and we're tied. Jen wants to make sure she wins that plantation. So, hmm. this is interesting. This is saying if Jen plays this, it's this power and play, which means she'd have to discard a card to do it. That means for the rest of this round, every time she would do a move action, instead of moving somebody to a different um, place, you move them out to the plantation. So this is something Jen could... Jen knows she needs to get at least one more guy out here. If I'm going to win this, then she's tied. So she needs to get one more guy out there. But I uh, guess she could pay one for this and then move as many guys as she wants. Another thing... Okay, well, another thing I know Jen wants to do is she does want to get at least one guy over here to hopefully score the three points. So she's going to play this because it's free to use this special power, um, which moves one guy into a blue spot of her choice. And immediately um, lets her draw another card. Right? That is draw another card, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's going to play that and draw a card. Boop. And she got a yellow. All right. And, all right. So she still needs to get more guys out here. So this is look at the board and, um, you know, basically for, I think this is, if, if you have at least one master, which Jen does have, hire two guys and, ooh, yeah. Jen's going to play this for free. She looks at the board, sees that she proves that she has one master in a guild, and that means she gets to hire two more guys in the guild. Normally, that would have cost her two cards, which she did for free, plus she gets one of these. Now, that's interesting. This card she just got, she could fight fire with fire. If, if I try to kick, she could kick one of my guys out, and I could kick two of her guys out. And now that's very, very interesting because, you know, if, if right now there's one, two, three, four guys here, which means this is going to activate. But when we get to negotiation, if Jen kicks one of my guys out, then there's not enough and this zone won't activate anymore. So now that Jen's got one of these, this contest got a lot more interesting. And Jen's still got more cards. So this would let her turn a green card, which she doesn't have, into, into a movement for any direction. Uh, this means that a uh, red, which she doesn't have, could be a wild. This means a green that she doesn't have could be a wild. So these are pretty much just only good for money. I think she does want to get more people out there. So she'll go on ahead and she'll play this. She'll spend this as a dollar to activate this. And this does seem kind of crazy. But, I mean, because I think there are other cards that cost just a dollar that move only a single guy out to the plantation. Yeah. Like, you know, because it actually shows this one right here. 
uh, you know, to, which doesn't have the little um, thing, take one of your Liverman pawns from the guild hall and place it on the plantation or vice versa. That's what this looks like. I really do have to wonder if this is a typo. I think this is. No, no, no. Because this is, a, this is not card number nine here. Because you can see there's four of that card. There's only three of this card. So I think that's what this means. No, okay. Oh, no, this, this doesn't, I mean, it would be, if there were multiples, it would be even I want. This means I can do one or two. So Jen paid a dollar to activate this, and that means she can move one or two guys out to the plantation. She's going to move two out there. Or alternatively, she could have moved one or two guys back. So she uh, spent a dollar to do that one. These two were free, and she spent a dollar to do that one. And, um, right, and then so she's still got a couple of cards. And I think she's not going to do anymore. So she's done. Her work here is done. Her turn is over. All right. And now it is my turn. And, you know, I thought I had this in the bag because, you know, there's enough guys here. And although here's the, here's the problem. There are enough guys here. But I don't, I mean, remember, I didn't use my guy to kick Jen out of here to prevent her getting a point. I don't want her to get three points in a thing. So I probably want to use one of my negotiation guys to kick her out. But if I do that, then I don't get to score that tile. So I need to get more guys into that zone. Now, it's easy. Heck, I could get three guys here just by discarding three red cards. But is there a better thing I could do? I could instead use this to move Jen out. Um... Let's see, now this one is, I pay a dollar, and uh, four plus question mark, right, I need to look what this one is. What does that mean, four plus question mark? Right, if you have hired four or more liverymen this turn, score three victory points. Oh yeah, okay, that makes sense. If you have, this is hire four guys, if you've um, hired four or more liverymen, get three points. So, on a turn where you're going to hire a bunch of guys, this is a good card, I'm not going to hire... Actually, I'm getting low on guys, but I'm not thinking I'm going to have a turn where I hire a bunch of guys. I don't have any cards that let me, boom, hire a ton of people all at once. So I am actually going to play this card just for its regular movement and move a guy over here. So now, even if Jen uses her guy to kick one of my guys out, then there's still enough people to activate this. But I also want to use one of my guys to kick her out, so I need more people in there. So i got to give up another red. Um, uh, let's see. So this is, for the rest of the round, if I'm moving... Ooh, yeah, this is nice. Well, okay. So if I pay a card to use this, that means whenever I do a move, I get to move two people instead of one. But I only need to really only... If I move one more guy over here, then, worst case, Jen kicks one of my guys out, I kick one of her guys out, there's still four total. So I don't need to move multiples in there. So yeah, I just need to move a single guy. So instead of using this to, to charge up his power to move multiple guys, this would be a good turn when I want to move four or five guys all at once. But instead, I'm just going to play this really simple. Um, so I don't have to pay for it. I'm just moving another guy over here. So now I've got the four. And then I've still I've got, I've got some more cards. Wow. Although I've only got one free guy. There are no guilds that need just one guy. So do I want to use any of these other cards for anything else? Moving a guy around. See, I don't have two masters yet, so this doesn't do me any good. Uh, if I play this, which is free, I can move guy... Oh, no, this is moving guys back. Jen already kicked me out of the plantation. So um, I can't move any guys back and do that. So I could use this to move into a green space. I could use any of these to move my last guy into a green space. Or I could use these just to hire guys. I do need to hire guys because I'm running out. Although three of these guys are going to come back. Um, you know, I'm not going to play anything more. I'm just going to hold on. I, it's, if, if uh, you know, it's good to have a bunch of cards in your hand so you have more flexibility in the future. I just played two cards, really simply, no neat combo chains to get the guys out there. My turn is over. I draw two cards, and that's it. We're are we both gone now. At the end of the round, we resolve. Zippity doo dah, zippity. Ooh, boom! We're going to do this now. We have to negotiate. Jen goes first. So Jen could use her one to kick one of mine out. But she can see I've got so many in there that that's not going to change anything. So she's going to save her one. She's not going to kick anybody out. And now, continuing with the negotiation, I am going to spend one to kick her out so that she does not get those three points plus another Liverman. So um, now we do the count. I have the clear victor here. So I get the first place reward. The beetle is going to move from four to number eight. He's over here now. I get, the, I get four points. One, two, three, four. 
and I get to uh, make two moves. Um, one of which is going to be out to the plantation, so I'm still in the plantation, and one of them to move somebody around somewhere else. Now, where's the next thing I want to go? Well, I just want to get this one. This only requires two, so I'll just move a guy over here. So I'm about to claim that one as well. And then the last thing, nobody took second place because I kicked Jen out, and I now have two guilds. Uh, and remember, that's four bonus points for me because they're both red. It's also two bonus points because they're next to each other. And now when I play this card, this says, hey, if you have two masters that are in the same color guild, draw three cards at the end of your turn. So um, that's really, really nice for me. That's going to work out for me in several ways. Plus, I'm only one away from getting this and continuing my dominance of red. Uh, and meanwhile, so we, we resolve that. We continue on. There's nothing else out here. Now, because we're in round four, we're going to resolve the plantation. And, uh, not surprisingly, Jen has the clear majority over me. So, Jen gets first place. That means she draws three and keeps one. Let's see. Now, this is, oh, this is one point for every time she takes second place. So, this is worth a point. It could be worth more. This is one point for every... Did I shuffle these in very well? I think these were right next to each other. And now, in a two-player game, this is more points depending on how many different colors of guilds you have. So, she's got to pick one of these. <laughs> you know, I think she's going to try and get she's going to try and get even more bonus point opportunities over the course of the game. So this card, effectively, right now, since she's got two of these cards, this is worth two points, but it can be worth more and more if she collects more and more of them, um, because she, which means she wants to take over the dyer, so she can get another bonus card. She wants to take over the button maker, so she can get another bonus card, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So Jen's taking those. The other ones go. They don't get shuffled back in. They go to the bottom of the deck. And now, because Jen was the winner, it says two of her guys out there are lost. So she's still set up for majority. Now me, I came in second place. Hey, I get three points. One, two, three. And um, one of my guys is lost. Or retires, I guess you could say, out on the frontier. So after all that's over, Jen is still the um, majority holder for the platform for when we get to round eight. And that's good because she's in a situation where she wants to keep winning so she can get more of these cards that will give her more points. So I've got more obvious points, but Jen, she's starting to build stuff up as well. Remember, she's got guaranteed eight points. She can't not get this unless she just goes crazy and forgets about it. And this can start building up more and more. And that was that round. We resolved the plantation. Jen held uh, control of it. I've got um, two masters. She's got one. I'm starting to work on another one. We move on to round five. But now here's the downside. I've got more points, so that means I'm I'm the first player, and it is a huge advantage to be last player. So that means Jen gets to respond to what I do. But on the flip side, Jen only has two cards. So she needs to start rebuilding her hand, whereas me, I got a whole bunch of cards. And I know what I want to do. I just want to keep, uh, keep it simple, stupid. I just want to get the Coopers here and continue. And all I need to do, heck, is just move. Oh. So I could play this to move a red guy, but then I'm giving up my move one of Jen's guys away and just kick her out. But you know what? I'll do that anyway, just because I need to get in there. And so now at the end of not round five, but round six, this is going to get activated. Uh, um, but, and this is the interesting thing, whoever owns this gets two points plus a, a free move. Move either one of, her, one of the masters or one of the regulars. Whoever comes in second place gets four points. So you better believe Jen's going to try to get into second place. And the interesting thing is now we both only have one of these. So the negotiation might be a little bit more tense. All right, but anyway. So I'm doing that, and what else am I doing? Let's see. Well, I'm definitely going to play this, which says, Hey, look, do you have two matching? Yes, I do. Which means at the end of my turn, I'm going to get to draw three cards. Plus two. So I'm going to draw five cards at the end of this turn. Um, and since my hand size is seven, I better play at least two more cards. Because I don't want to have to discard cards. So what else do I want to do? <clears throat> Let's see. Now here's a problem. I'm, I'm, again, I really need to hire some more people. Um, Let's see, this would let me, if I play this, it would let me move a guy to a green space and hire one person or get another neutral guy. I don't need to get into green spaces, though. Actually, that's not entirely true. Uh, I want Lord Mayor's Parade, and that, it, greens, can get me in there also. Do I want to start working on that? Do I just want to lay the foundation for it? Yeah, sure, what the heck. I will play this. Hmm. Is this interesting? If I play this, which means I have to discard a card, anything would be a green. So I can move a whole bunch of guys. Oh, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to play this as a... Um, 
Yeah, I'm going to play this as a yellow, which lets me move a guy into here because I can move with yellow, red, uh, green, or brown. Remember, these four are special buildings. They're not regular guilds. So I played that not just for movement. And I want to play one more card. I need to start hiring stuff. Oh, no, actually, I'm not going to play that one for it. I'm going to play this one. It doesn't cost me anything. I use this to move this guy in here. Plus, I get to hire another guy or another... I need to just hire more guys. So I'm just going to hire a regular guy. And now I've got one more card. I need to play one more card so I don't have to discard anything. Um, I don't, I'm not really going to be bringing people back from the, from the new world, back to the old. So I'm just going to play this, not for moving people around, not for the special power, but just to hire somebody. All right. And... That was that, I believe. And so, I played all my cards. I have set this up. I'm starting. Because the interesting thing is, once this plays, hey, at the end, I get to move. I'll move a guy over here. So it could be that on round six, I activate this and this in the same turn, because this would be the thing that finishes this off. And now, at the end of my turn, because I had that power, I get to draw five cards. What was the thing that let me do that? I've totally forgotten what I've done. Oh, yeah, because I looked at the end, uh, I had him at the end of my turn, I got to draw three plus my two, five. J getting hand control, having lots of cards, that is everything in this game. So that was my turn. Now it's Jen's turn, and she's only got two cards. This is kind of painful. Um, she need, You know what? I think Jen's just going to pass and draw four cards. Because neither of these cards let her draw cards really well. She just needs to prepare herself for the next round. So two, three, four. All right. And that was it. So now we're going on round six. I'm the first player. I know this is going to activate. I want to get some more guys here. So I move a guy over here. So I get to activate both of these things and claim both of these. And then my unbroken chain continues. But Jen could throw a monkey in that wrench because she goes last and she's got six cards. So whatever I try to set up, she could mess up, particularly because she can negotiate now as well. So I have to proceed with caution. But you know what? I think that's a pretty good place to stop because you have seen we are now on to round six of 16. So we're about a third of the way through Guilds of London. And if you'd like to hear some final thoughts now, you can hit the I in the top right corner of the screen or follow the show notes in five, four, three, two, one.